while we were in the Holy Land, an email came from Crossroads informing us that a man who has been guiding tours for 24 years and training others in the National Tour Guide course was visiting Canada. Shahar Shilo is a Jewish archaeological and biblical expert. The historian and scholar is also director of marketing for the City of David, uh, which was my last stop before leaving Israel. Exciting discoveries are making this land a magnet for archaeologists. You would agree 100%. I, I would say it's way much more than that because our mutual heritage, Jews, Christians, and Muslims, starts actually with Jerusalem in the times of King David. This is exactly what we see right now on the video. You're actually visiting right now a neighborhood next to the palace of the king from the time of Zedekiah, uh, from the time of Hezekiah, from the time of King David. We're actually looking at pictures of the place where it all began. Above the Gihon Spring, we will be witnessing this in a moment, and the amount of things coming out of the ground from the city of David in the last 10 years is remarkable. It's astonishing even for us. It's well, that's just 2008, this discovery of the old city of David, and just open to the public, what, a well, couple of years? Well, it's been 150 years of excavation, to be more exact, but the last 30 years, actually, the archaeologists did not even know that they're digging the biblical city of David, as people were still walking to the wrong pilgrimage, I should say, to Mount Zion, their ancient lonely planets, and trip advisors took them to the wrong sites, and they were walking in Jerusalem in different places, not even knowing and acknowledging that the city of David was underneath them the whole time. Mm -hmm. It is basically open to the public in that specific form for the last 10 years. So thrilling. Now, you've brought your own show and tell. I'm, go I'm going to be unfolding mine, I'm sure, over weeks and months. But um, uh, let's start with, uh, with I think, an aerial view. With pleasure. I think we need to understand what Jerusalem is. And when one to say Jerusalem today that is mentioned in the Bible, first time as Shalem, Genesis 14, 18, the city of Salem, Shalem, Thank you. which is yes. Melchizedek and Abraham. Actually, we just finished up digging that right now with Mr. Eli Shukran, our chief archaeologist. And we were four with Eli months ago, Exactly. And yes. four months ago, did we open that? And that is at the bottom of the picture, which is to be seen right now, right at the bottom of the picture where the Pool of Siloam is, in this place which looks like a village, but underneath it, we need to remember that Israel has layers and layers of history. So underneath it lies an ancient city, the city of David, which starts from the Gihon Spring, from the Canaanite system of water from the time of Melchizedek. 700 times Jerusalem. Well, 700 times under mentioned. the name Jerusalem only, but if you remember, we have a phrase saying that Jerusalem has got 72 different names in the Bible. And therefore, if you gather them all up together, such as Zion, Zion, right? Such as Ariel, the city of the Lord, etc., you've got over 1,500 mm -hmm. times that Jerusalem is actually mentioned in the Holy Scriptures. Now, you have photos of some of the things that I did see and some that I didn't. So let's keep going. Well, well, with pleasure. This is actually one of the most amazing proofs of the existence of this story. We learn from Isaiah, if I remember correctly, Isaiah 8. He says, the water of Siloam are flowing gently and slowly. You're actually looking right now at an amazing inscription in Hebraic, six rows of ancient Hebraic letters that are commemorating the enterprise that was done by Hezekiah's quarrymen that were digging Hezekiah's tunnel. Now, what, this what was year is that, Hezekiah? This is 705 BCE. <laughs> 705 BCE, that's the great revolt against the Assyrian king who comes to try and conquer Jerusalem, eventually to be away, sent by Isaiah, the famous prophet. Mm. But we're looking at a playground, if I may call it that way, when historical documents are actually affirming the biblical story. So the text from the Bible is as clear as it gets, but we historians can actually prove it by using outside information which we cross with the Bible. It's like an amazing crossroad that we stand on a specific site in Jerusalem and say, wow, this is where it all took place. Mm. And if we may move to the other picture that I can show, there's much more to it. A new discovery made by our friend Eli Shukran again, the ancient pool of Siloam. This is during the beginning of the excavation. What we see right now is when it just started out. We need to remember the pool of Siloam, which is mentioned right after the inscription of Siloam, actually started with Hezekiah, but it became a lot more famous in the time of King Herod. And Jesus. Jesus performed a miracle here. Only two miracles were performed by Jesus within Jerusalem. You're looking right now at the place that was actually stepped by Jesus and his disciples because this is the pool of Siloam. John 9, 7 describes the miracle of the healing of the blind man by Jesus in the pool of Siloam. How so they would places? have stepped down those steps into the pool. Can you imagine yourself? He sees that blind man in the upper part of the city. 
how could a blind man find the way down to the pool of Siloam unless it was a well-paved known road? Why? Because that's the road le leading from pilgrims all the way from pool of Siloam to the Temple Mount. This was like the number one. It was like telling someone go to Fifth Avenue in New York. Everybody knows where it is. So this is how that blind person could tell how to go down to the pool of Siloam. He washes the face, if, if you remember the face, when Jesus spits on the ground, takes some, some mud and sure. puts it upon his brow. Then he washes his face and he comes to see again. This is the one of the two miracles conducted in Jerusalem. The second one would be in the pools of Bethesda, which described in John 5, 1 to 9. And they both had to do with an amazing story that David started out. If I remind you, 2 Samuel chapter 5, David is being blamed by the Jebusite king as thy shall not come here until you remove the blind and the lame. Only if you read the ancient testament, which is the Bible, can you understand the New Testament? Jesus will conduct two miracles in Jerusalem, blind and lame. Oh, Rings a bell? Beautiful. It starts with David. One millennium passes from David to Jesus, and Jesus still addresses the same issue when he walks in Jerusalem. Remove the blind and the lame. Only this time, not with power, not with a war and rage. This time it's mercy and grace, because Jesus is all about mercy and grace. Mm. So he actually heals the blind and the lame, making Jerusalem what it is, shalem. Let me say shalom to our viewers. Shalom and shalem derives from the ancient Hebrew word which is complete, whole. Complete so only or whole? Complete, something which is complete. So shalom can only be attained and achieved when something is shalem, complete. This was one of the most amazing findings. This was actually taking place in 2005. And this is a bulla, bulla, which is an impression. B-U-L-A? B Correct, coming Greek, from ancient Greek, 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 ancient Greek, which stands for an impression. This was sealing ancient documents, which was made, made of parchment. We found the archive in the city of David that held those parchments, but they were burning away in 586 BCE. From the ashes of the destruction of Jerusalem comes out bullas, which are ancient impressions bearing Hebraic names in letters, which we know so well from the Bible, because those names, the bulla which we've just seen right now, belongs to a certain minister in the kingdom of Sedekias. The guy is called Yehochal, son of Shlemiao. If we remember, this guy actually grabs Jeremiah by the arm and throws him to the pit when Jeremiah prophesizes this terrible prophecy that he gives Sedekias, that his sons and daughters will be slaughtered in front of his eyes. He this will be blinded. This is King Zedekiah. So this is King Sedekiah. Mm. And the guy who actually was performing as a minister in his kingdom sends us regards from the grave and say, hello guys, that is me, you're the one you're reading about in this bulla. So actually each and every one of those bullas for us is regards from the Bible. It's like affirming complete chapters and stories from the Bible, which we as historians can touch base with. And this is a 2,600 years old ancient document. A, a stamp, as it were. Yeah. I'm, I, I was shocked, maybe I shouldn't have been, to learn, and here's another one you'll be telling us about, that uh, prior to these discoveries, uh, bulas in particular, and, and, and other antiquities, even the, the existence of the of town of Bethlehem was questioned. The existence of King David was challenged. Well, cynicism is all around us. And people looking at the Bible sometimes and says, well, someone had to put it up in order to justify their belonging to the country. But when you dig the country objectively, without looking at the Bible and things that go and affirms the Bible, comes out of the ground from sterile places that were not touched before us, this brings the question, why should we question to begin with? Because I would say this, nothing that has been found in Israel in the last years is contradicting the biblical stories. Much of it affirms some doesn't relate to the Bible, which is fine. We had other times in Israel, but the Bible, we have the Crusaders, we have the Byzantine, we have the Arabic times and the mm -hmm. Abbasid and the Umayyads. We had huge amounts of dynasties of kings in the Holy Land which some of them are biblical, some are not. But the amazing thing is nothing that is coming out of Jerusalem contradicts the Bible, of course. It all goes and affirms the Bible. You know, I think I know my Bible pretty well, but I have to say every single place we visited, I was challenged to go back, read the story again, read it as it was written. Just, it ignites a love of history. If, if I may share with you something amazing that I brought with me, I want to show because we know our Bible well. If, if we can get a close up for this, what we're looking at right now, you can, you, you can lift it up and you're holding right now in your hand something which is quite amazing. It's like this a is Roman the original, original minted coin made of silver from Tyre, the Phoenician city of Tyre. Why would we have this? Because the book of Exodus actually commands every Jew coming to the temple 
to bring the annual tax you're holding right now in your hand, and which is okay. You can hold it in your is hand. Is it all right? I should have asked. It's a 2,000. No, 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 it's okay. Fine. It's 2,000 years 2000 old? 2,000 years old coin, silver, minted in Tyre. Why Tyre? Because the Phoenicians were helping their Jewish friends as there were no no way for Jews to mint coins due to the time when they were submitted under the Romans. Now Jesus, when he comes to Jerusalem, we need to understand Jesus actually brings in his pocket this kind of coin because this is the money you take from the money changers in the Temple Mount. The story is oh, so remarkable. This is because, what is required for because the temple? Because when Matthew tells us that Jesus got mm. angry and furious with the money changers and he tosses away their tables, these are the tables. This is what we were finding next to the Western Wall. Because they were Actually, exploiting the poor. Of course. Yeah. But these are the original coins, 2,000 years old. If I may share with you something Please. else which is amazing from Jesus' times, I would love to share that because this oh, is something, again, oh. I would let you hold it in your hand if you... Are you interested? sure? Yes, it's a 2,000 years old. I was going to bring my replica. It's a 2,000 years old But why do that when you can have a 2,000 year one old one? From the time of okay, Jesus. You can tell that it was lighted up once, 2,000 yes. years ago. It actually still is black from the time of when the oil was burning. And this one is a 2,000 years old. It's a Roman style. It's a very classical Roman style. Belongs in the first century BCE and holding on to the first 50 years of, of you know, the first century AD. Now, did it have to be olive oil? Was yes. It olive oil? Yes, it was olive oil. And then the wick it was would come out here. Yes, exactly. The wick would come out yeah. here, and it would just. It was just burned for a few. By the way, this can hold up to three to five hours of burning in regular rooms if there's no wind. If the wind comes, then it burns a bit faster. So you can actually refill it every few hours with olive oil. We were now told the... soak the wick first. Soak yeah, the oil. of course. Otherwise, it burns immediately. Otherwise... Give me oil in my lamp. Keep me burning. And, and and there's much more to it because I wanted to share with you some some other beautiful stuff that I brought with me. This is an original Hasmonean arrowhead from the time of Hasmoneans. Ooh. Let me remind you, the Hasmoneans were the dynasty rebelling and doing the great revolt against the Greeks in 167 BCE. This belongs in the second second century BCE. And again, we find that kind of stuff in an amazing sifting project that comes out of Temple Mount. There's a whole grade of sifting project, which <gasps> are our rebel that is coming out of Temple Mount. Yes. And the debris has been thrown away to the... Oh. To the valley. That was one of the most exciting. Am I on the right page? You are completely with on Gabby. the right page. Yes. Uh, let me get his name. Uh, uh, Professor Gabriel Barcai, uh, a lead player in this drama. He's one of the of the I would say the world scholars when it comes to Jerusalem. He is so famous today that everybody would know him. Every person who ever learns about Jerusalem from China to Russia would know Gabi Barkai. This guy excavated Jerusalem for over 45 years by now, and he's a master when it comes to archaeology. He can tell by by a coin, by a piece of shred of pottery, like this. He can tell the whole story. We see. The evidence of the Bible exists anywhere from Tel Dan up north, which is the famous city of Dan where the piece of pottery remembering King David says, all the way down to biblical Beersheba. You've Dan got to Beersheba. Yes, the of Bible course. Talks about the of course, land. Dan to Beersheba is mentioned seven times in the Bible as the borders of the inhabitation of the tribes. I have to ask one last quick question. You know, these, these discoveries are so thrilling. I, I, I think they'd be thrilling to anybody, but certainly to people of faith. What is the response with uh, university students when you speak, with, with academia, the people who maybe were uh, reluctant to accept the historicity of these names I and need, I need to say that I'm very lucky for working in this business for 25 years and actually I found very, very little amount of people in my 25 years of service that actually refused to accept the truth of the archaeological world as it is because when you combine history, archaeology and Bible, and they all meet in a specific point, then we have a bingo. Very few students have refused to say, and they said, look, this is what we believe in, sorry, we cannot accept it. So due to, you know, beliefs is something stronger than knowledge. But when it comes to knowledge, we can prove the Bible, I would say in 99% of the places in Israel, it affirms what we find in the country and the documents. And I'm very lucky to enjoy my work oh. on a daily basis when my office is in the city of David above all that amazing, beautiful findings. Well, you can see this is why they say you cannot visit Israel and not be changed. I hope your heart has been stirred, and uh, Shahar and I together want to say uh, shalom. Thank you so much. Shalom, and thank you very much for having us. It's been a pleasure.